In 2018, an anonymous senior official published an op-ed in the New York Times titled, I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. Then in 2020, that official revealed himself as Miles Taylor, former Department of Homeland Security chief of staff. Now with a new book out under his own name, Taylor has an urgent new warning for Americans. I'm happy to have Miles Taylor here tonight. He's also the co-founder and senior advisor of the Forward Party. The new book is called Blowback, a warning to save democracy from the next Trump. And he's got a new podcast called The Whistleblower Inside the Trump Administration. Miles, I am so glad you are here. What do you want people to know most about a possible Trump second term? Well, Stephanie, I think what's important is in the first term, what Trump wanted to do ended up being very scattershot. And not to be too reductionist about it, it was a little bit like a cat with a ball of yarn when you walked into the Oval Office. Constantly distracted, not a lot of focus. He knew he wanted to take a wrecking ball to the government, but by no means did he have a clear agenda. What's worrying about a second term, and official after official that served in the Trump administration told me, is now the plans are systematic. There's been extensive effort over the past few years of his close loyalists to lay the groundwork from day one for what they call a shock and awe blitz on the federal government. And that means a department by department effort to weaponize the powers of the government against the political opposition. This isn't how taxpayers imagine their departments are going to operate as retributive tools for a single man's anger, but that's what they're planning for, and they're giving it the lightest veneer of legality and policy justification. But make no mistake, this is driven to satisfy one man's anger. Okay, you know this. Republicans know this. Former Trump officials know this. And in the book, you write about all sorts of Republicans who are privately disgusted by this man and his mission, but they don't say anything. What will it take for people to take a, to take a stand. Yeah. Real significant Republicans. I'm looking at you, Mitch McConnell. Uh, the silence is confounding. And I will concede that in the some ways... The silence is a gift to Donald Trump. It, it's absolutely a gift. And it's what he depends on. And he's actually learned that, as my friend Alex Vindman told me, Miles, intimidation works. Mm -hmm. And that's what they've learned, is that this tool of intimidation allows him to keep total and complete command over the Republican Party. Donald Trump, make no mistake, has a Darth Vader-like chokehold of every senior Republican in the party, despite the fact that in private they fear him, in private they demean him, but, but they say nothing. intimidated by a senior citizen who doesn't currently have a job... Right, who's living in Florida and New Jersey, uh, facing two indictments and a possible third. Why he's so scary? Well, he's scary because his dog whistle is actually really loud. When he tries to get his supporters to intimidate his opponents, they stand up to it. And, you know, my friend Adam Kinzinger did something I thought very smart last year. He released a long slew of the very nasty, very vile, and very threatening voicemails that he and his wife continue to get. And, and he released those threats to show how bad it's getting. I've had the same thing happen uh, to me. I've followed Adam's lead and put those things out there. So people realize how severe the intimidation is. But Republicans have been cowed into silence. But, you know, I want to point back to Adam, because he said there's something worse than that that they fear, something worse than the threats to their families. And I said, what could that be, Adam? What could they fear more than their families being threatened when they're home? And he said they fear... Losing fared, power. And they fear, they fear being kicked out of the tribe. They care more about their tribal affiliation than they do about the fear of death. But the tribe has changed. Right, right. That tribe was once the I want to be part of, of, of the Bush scene, the Paul Ryan scene, right? The, the Ronald Reagan universe. We're now talking uh, 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 about the people that are rolling up January 6th style or at a Trump rally or who are pushing uh, election fraud claims. Who, you know, your tribe, the tribe isn't who the tribe was. So are people saying, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll hang with this new crew? Well, to give you a sense also of how dramatically it's changed, I, I point to an anecdote in the book about how 
during election 2020, I traveled to every swing state to try to talk to Republicans and say, listen, I was there. I saw the man up close. I'm a fellow conservative. Don't vote for him. And I saw something when I was traveling through Pennsylvania. There was a sign in someone's yard that basically said, I love Donald Trump and, and Ronald Reagan sucks. And I thought that's such an odd thing for a conservative to say. And Trump for years has said an odd that, sign to put in your front yard. That's right. <laughs> and then Trump for years has said, you know, I'm bigger than Reagan and I'm bigger than Lincoln. And I thought it was an absurd hyperbolic thing. But you know what, Stephanie? I now think there was some truth to it because Reagan and Lincoln never had this bizarre cult of personality that Donald Trump has built around the country to the point that for some of his supporters, it's nearly religious and messianic. That's what we're contending with. And it's something we haven't experienced in modern day politics. All right. So my last question before we go, you are the co-founder of the Forward Party. Right. And so in theory, this idea, a third party, a third party candidate, America wants something different. But yeah. wouldn't a third party candidate like what No Labels is doing only help Donald Trump? Yeah. Well, I help stand up the forward party. I'm not currently affiliated with it anymore. And I want to see more choice and competition in our democracy. But one of the last things that I made sure of before I stepped back from leadership at forward was saying, we must publicly commit to not run a presidential candidate. And that organization did so. And I have grave fears about the no labels folks potentially giving Donald Trump a fast path back to the White House. And Stephanie, my exhortation to them today publicly, as I've said to them privately, is I think before they do this, they need to go talk to the Biden White House and see if maybe they can work in coalition with the Democrats to save our country against the potential of autocracy. We're going to end on exhortation because I will tell you, Miles Taylor may or may not have been your favorite interview tonight, but he definitely had the best vocabulary.